Welcome to part two of creating visual movie effects in Blender. In this video, I'll be talking about color grading. Color grading is the process of adjusting the brightness and contrast, the color balance, the levels, the hue and saturation, or the curves of a movie file. If you're familiar with adjusting those things in a program like GIMP or Photoshop for a still image file, uh, you'll be right at home here, except in Blender we have to do this using a tool called Nodes. Nodes are a very powerful way of adding effects and filters to a movie file in Blender. Uh, the downside in Blender is that we can only do this with one clip at a time, but you'll see that we can actually save our settings and apply the same adjustments to color and brightness and contrast and levels, etc. to multiple movie clips uh, after we've done the first setup. If you have not seen the first video in this series, in which I talked about video editing, and I'll put a link to that on the screen right now, I would highly recommend it, because in that video I showed you how to use what's called the Video Sequence Editor window, in which you can import multiple video clips and arrange them and edit them and do trimming and add transitions. And in the last part of the last video, I talked about how to export a movie file out from Blender to a video file on your computer. So let's go ahead and jump in, in this video. I'll be talking about color grading, and so I'll click on my splash screen to get rid of it. The first thing I'll do is I'm not gonna do any 3D in this video, so I don't need this 3D view window. I'm gonna change this large window into a node editor window, which of course you click on this button in the bottom um, header of this viewport to a node editor window. Nodes are most commonly used in Blender to add materials to 3D objects when you're using the Cycles Render Engine. And because of that, right now, this button is checked. This is for material nodes. We want to use compositing nodes, which is the next option. So I'll click on that button. And I want to click on Use Nodes right away. And actually, I'll click on Backdrop as well. When you do that, when you enable nodes and you switch over to compositing nodes, you get two nodes right away. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll up on my mouse to zoom in. It gives us a render layers node, which we're actually not going to use, so I'll delete that in a sec. And it gives us a composite node. Really, you can think of these nodes as an input and an output. This input node happens to bring in a 3D scene if I'm making a scene and I want to use nodes to do things like adjust the color of it. And this composite node allows us to do things like export, like render or render an animation and save to a file on our computer. We obviously need this one because that's what we wanted to do after we do some digital color grading. But I'm going to get rid of this render layers node, so I'll select it. Of course, you right click to select things in Blender and I'll press X or delete on my keyboard and that will get rid of that node. Instead of bringing in something from a 3D scene, Let's go ahead and bring in a movie file into this node editor window. The way we do that is, of course, using nodes. That's what nodes are for. You can really do lots of different things with nodes, and we'll be touching upon maybe five or six of those things in this video. I'll go down to the Add menu. Uh, alternatively, of course, you can press Shift-A on your keyboard. Shift-A brings up the Add uh, menu on your screen, wherever your mouse is. And I'm going to select Input. And yes, there are lots of categories here. And it takes a while to know where everything is, but really we're going to be inputting or importing a movie clip. So under input, movie clip, there we go. When you add a new node, it kind of sticks to your mouse until you left click. And I'm going to put it over here on the left side of this window. In fact, I'll right click and I'll press G on my keyboard to grab and move this composite window and put it on the left side of my screen. Great. The way you use nodes, though, is you have to connect them using what's called a noodle. And yes, that's sort of a funny word, um, but how you do that is there are all these circles on the left and right of different nodes that you'll add, and these are called ports. And ports on the right side of a node are usually output ports, and these little ports on the left side of a node are called input ports. And in this case, we want to create a flow or a connection from our import all the way out to our export. In other words, from our movie clip node to our composite node. And the way you do that is by clicking and dragging, in this case, from the image node. So I'm going to click and drag with my left mouse button, and it creates a new noodle. That's what this is. And I'm going to hold it until I get over the input of this composite node, and I'll let go. So now I have a noodle connecting the movie clip to the composite. And the next step is to actually bring in my movie file. So I'm gonna click on open in the movie clip uh, import node, and it brings up my save and open dialog box in Blender. And I have a movie file that I'll be bringing in on my desktop. So under system bookmarks, I'll go to desktop. 
Um, I have a movie file, and you can use any movie file that you like. Mine's called Croatia-Street. This was filmed a few years ago when I went to Croatia. I just filmed this video outside of the window uh, of a moving van. So I'll select that video file and click on Open Clip. And as you can see, it gives us a little tiny preview in this uh, node. And if I actually scrub through my timeline, if I click and drag with my left mouse button and I let go, it'll actually sort of show me the frame at where I currently am in my timeline in this little preview. But we want a larger video preview because we'll be adjusting colors and brightness and contrast and things like that. That's why I clicked on backdrop here. But in order to get a backdrop, in order to get this video file um, in a large size in the background of this window, I have to add one more output uh, node. Right now we have one. It's called composite. I'm going to press shift A on my keyboard and I'm going to add a new output and it's going to be called a viewer. The sole purpose of this viewer, and I'll click to put it on the left side of my uh, node editor window, the sole purpose of this node is to allow you to have a backdrop. That's all it's for, but as with all nodes, for it to work, we have to connect it up. So I'm going to click on this image uh, output of the movie clip node and drag it. Yes, you can have two nodes sometimes going from an output. I'm going to let go over the input on the viewer. And as you can see, with that connected, it gives us the 78th frame of my movie clip uh, in the background of this window. Now, if it's being cut off, like mine is, I can't see the entire thing, I can press V on my keyboard. V is the keyboard shortcut to zoom out. If you zoomed too far out, like I have, you can press Alt-V on your keyboard, and Alt-V will zoom back in, assuming you have your mouse in this window. So I want mine about maybe V to zoom back out, about that size. If you want to move your nodes around, because maybe they're obscuring this backdrop, you can press your mouse wheel down like a button, and you can pan around, so that's what that does. Uh, pushing your mouse wheel down like a button is also known as orbiting in Blender if you're in 3D. So if I orbit in this window um, using my mouse wheel button, that's how I can move nodes around. I can also hold the Alt key on my keyboard and do the same thing. So if I hold Alt and orbit with my mouse wheel pushed down like a button, I can move or pan around that backdrop. So again, just orbiting with your mouse wheel button pans around the nodes. If I hold Alt, it moves around the background and you can use V and Alt V to edit or shrink or grow your background. There we go. Let's go ahead and start processing this video by adding some color adjusting nodes. So I'll press Shift A on my keyboard and I'll go down to color. All the nodes for the rest of this video that we'll be using will be under color. Of course, you can use add down here and color right there. I'm gonna press Shift A. I'm gonna add a new color node. And the first thing we'll add is brightness and contrast, one of the more basic color adjusting nodes. Of course, when I add a new node, it gets stuck to my mouse until I left click. And I'm actually gonna drag it into one of these two nodes. I am actually mean noodle in this case. As you can see, when I put this node that's stuck to my mouse over a noodle, it turns orange. And if you let go by clicking, it'll actually put itself in the middle of that noodle. In other words, it'll reattach the noodle to its input and it'll connect its output to the output where the noodle was before. But right now, this brightness and contrast node is going from the image output of a movie clip node out to the viewer. And that means that if I make adjustments here, and then I press render, which will render one frame of my movie, it will not process the changes that I make using my adjustment nodes. And that's because we have to make sure that everything is always connected at the very end to this composite node. So what I'll actually do here is I'll connect the output of my brightness and contrast node to the composite node as well. And yes, you can often have two noodles coming out of the output of an adjustment node. So I'm going to take a sec. I'm going to slide these two values around. Maybe I want this to be a little bit darker. So I'll click on the arrow or you can click and drag. There we go, just a little bit. And I'll up the contrast a little bit just by dragging. There we go. Not that much though. Great. I'm going to go ahead now and zoom out by scrolling down. I'll move these two over because I'm going to add another adjusting node. So I'll press Shift A on my keyboard. This time I'm going to go ahead and add a color balance node. So I'll click there and I'm going to put it in the same noodle between the last adjusting node and the output of the viewer. So I'll put it there and click. And as you can see, because it turned orange, it inserted itself nicely. I have to reconnect the output of this final adjusting node to my composite. 
And now I can adjust the lift, gamma, and gain. Um, you can go ahead and just play around with these. I'll take a second to do just that. Great, so I've adjusted those three color wheels. Let's go ahead, I'm actually gonna pan over with my uh, nodes, with my mouse wheel down like a button, so I can move these over. I'm gonna go ahead and add a RGB curves node, because this is one of the more powerful color adjusting nodes that there is. So I'll press Shift E on my keyboard, and under color, it's called RGB curves. I'll click there, drag it into the noodle, and click with my mouse's left button, and it inserts itself, and I'll click on this output and reconnect it to the input of my composite. Great. This curves window represents basically a bar graph of all 256 uh, levels, in other words, brightness and contrast levels in this image. You actually cannot see the bar graph, but if you imagine a, a bar sticking up of all the complete blacks, and then grays, and lighter grays, and lighter grays. All the way over here, there is a bar representing all the pure whites in the scene. And so if I click on this line and move it down or up or around, it creates a new point, and if I let go, it kind of skews and morphs that bar graph to this line, or at least it adjusts them all proportionally to how much I move that line. If I don't want that point, I can click on the X, and I can actually adjust the points at the beginning and end of the diagonal line. So if I drag this point to the right, what I'm actually doing here is I'm taking all of the blacks and dark grays, or mostly dark grays except for the very end bar of the, of the graph, and I'm making all of those bars uh, black. Likewise up here, if I drag this point to the left, I'm taking what was white and all of the almost white light grays, and I'm making everything over here into a complete white. So if I drag these two towards the middle, you can see I get a lot of contrast. Of course, I don't want that much, so I'll drag those back, and I'll create a few points, and just make a more contrasty image here. As you can see, this is really powerful. You can really muck up uh, your image a lot, but I'll get rid of those. Uh, you left click on these points to select them, which is a little bit backwards for Blender. Great, I'll go ahead and zoom out by scrolling down, and I'll orbit to move these over, and I'll move these over here so we can add a, a one or two more. I'll press Shift A on my keyboard, and again, under color, I'll go ahead and add a hue saturation value node. With it selected, of course, I can move it around with my mouse, and I'll drag it into that noodle, and I'll connect its output to the input of the composite, and I'll zoom in on it so you can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna turn the hue a little bit off, so right there. And I'm gonna adjust the saturation. Maybe I'll turn the saturation down in my scene and I'll turn the value up. No, that makes it brighter, so I'm not gonna adjust that. I can click in any of these values and type the value that I want. And I think that's good. If you wanna see what your image looks like without one of your nodes, what you can do is you can select it and I believe you press the M key on your keyboard. When I press the M key, it actually mutes my selected nodes, so I can actually select each one and press M to mute it. And I can select one again, and I can press M again to unmute it. So the M key acts as a toggle to mute or unmute a selected node. So I'll go ahead and select this one and press M again. Great. I actually want to add one node between my curves and my hue saturation value because I want to make this kind of a cool looking image. I want to pull out all the colors except for the original red. And I've changed red uh, because of this node. So if I press M on my keyboard with it selected, I can mute that note so we can see what's red again. We have uh, some reddish roofs and this happens to be red. So I'm gonna go ahead and press Shift A on my keyboard and that's gonna let me add one more node. I'm gonna add what's called a hue correct node and I'll drag it into the noodle uh, before hue saturation value because I want this to be the last one that affects uh, the image processing. So right there, I'll click and let go. This time I don't have to adjust anything at the end because it's already going out of the correct node. Again, what this node lets us do is lets me actually pull colors out of the image or bring colors up specifically uh, according to their hue or value or color. Um, so if I drag all of these points down, you can see that it's taking all of those colors away. If I drag that back up, you'll see a lot of the yellows just went away when I drag that down, but the reds stick around. If I drag that to the right, I can really make sure that all the reds stay in the scene, and as you can see, some of the color in the roofs came back. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag all of these values down, maybe not so much, maybe I don't want a completely black and white image. 
Uh, great, maybe right about there. Perfect. So now what I can do is I'm actually gonna just pan my nodes up and off the screen for a sec and kind of scrub through my movie. And as you can see, I have a very cool effect. It's very different, it's very desaturated, um, and just the reds are remaining. But again, I still have one of the nodes um, muted or hidden, so I'm gonna go ahead and pan back and select this node by right-clicking, and I'll press M on my keyboard, and then I'll move it back up. So now I have this very kind of interesting, maybe it's sort of a uh, Valentine's Day sort of a theme where everything is just pink, uh, including the lights on the car, which obviously were red before. Uh, and that's great. I want to see what this looks like in a full-size image, so I'll go ahead and press Render over here in my Properties window uh, under the Camera tab, and that's what it's going to look like. It's smaller right now because actually over here under Dimensions, it has the correct resolution, 1920 by 1080, but it's set to 50%, and that means it's going to be half as wide and half as tall, so really a quarter of the size. I'm going to go ahead and drag that up to 100%, and I'll press Render again. And as you can see, this is what our finished video file will look like. In this video, I'm not going to go over exporting to an MP4 video file because I'll tell that at the end of the last video. Again, I'll put a link to that video on the screen right now. But that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.